Can you hear me okay? If I speak up, great. Uh, I'm Brian Neal, I was trained in traditional allopathic medicine and have a big interest in energy medicine. And I've been uh, doing all kinds of things, Reiki, crystals, very safe, all the uh, sound therapies and such. We're going to talk about crystals today. Um, basically, they have a very big structure. And it, so they, there's something called a piezoelectric effect. If you compress them, they produce electricity. And if you apply electricity to it, it'll vibrate. If you've ever heard of a crystal watch, I find Mickey Mouse specimen here. The reason they use a the crystal is it goes at very precise rates, so it makes for accurate time. And each of these has a different frequency of vibration, just as, we do, just as everything you take in. Uh, so anything that you uh, eat, drink, whatever is having an effect is called the crystal. Um, you can use them to amplify your energy, and we'll show how that works in just a minute, to rebalance and uh, stabilize and cleanse. Um, for instance, uh, Patrick would probably need to work on his throat, as you can tell. Um, you can use visualization of colors, you can use sound, and uh, if you've ever heard crystal bowls, I didn't bring mine today, it's just beautiful in our moments. And what's kind of great about them, it affects everybody in the room. Uh, I was doing a talk in Sedona, Arizona, we had about 50 of them in the same room going at the same time. Now, this is a picture of a 32-year-old diabetic, and you may not be able to remember the color of the chakras, but it's the same as the rainbow, Roy G. Pitt. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And on the right is, you know, I asked if he had any health problems. He had diabetes since infancy, he said no. But if you look, his face chakra here barely shows up. It's not very red. I mean, he had infidels. Uh, his third chakra, which is the, has to do with the pancreas, is a lime green. You can't even see his heart chakra there. Uh, and, and I don't want to play at C, so I didn't say, do you have any uh, chest pain, shortness of breath, that kind of thing. I didn't ask you know, any other health issues and we denied any. And all he did simply in the second picture was hold a quartz crystal in each hand. And now you can see them all distinctly. This happened in second. Here's his heart chakra now showing up green. Better color in his third chakra. Um, you know, I suggested he had plant them in his hand. He got that in practice. And a month later he had his first heart attack. Um, so you'll often see things energetically before they appear in the physical. How do you choose a crystal? What do you like? If it appeals to who here has never had any experience with crystals? Well, come right up. It might help me. It won't hurt much. No. Um, we're going to pick, I'm just going to pick for you three different crystals here. Um, this is a quartz and amethyst, a tiger eye, and this is a black turmoil. You pick the one that appeals to you most of those three. Okay, that appeals to you most. Pick the one that's least appealing to you. So that appeals to you the least. Okay. If you put that down for just a minute, all I'm going to do is ask you to pick this where all my credibility is out the window. These are bouncing <laughs> around. You can see your field right about here. And let me just put the crystal where you can reach it easily. Actually, just take my field here. Um, you want to be careful with these because they can crash computers. So I'm going to put this right here. And I'm just going to adjust your field. Now, that's the one you like the most, right? Let me have you pick this one up first. And this, is that, no, this was the one you liked the least. Okay, now, the energy is already increasing. Um, it was about there. Pick up the one you like the least. Okay. <laughs> now put it down. Okay. Pick up the one you like the most. Oh, 
just stand there for a minute. I'll let you know where I am. <laughs> About 10 feet outside the building. Okay, you can put it down. Why do you think she likes that one better? It really resonates with her. It really pumps her energy. And there's a lot of people like yourself wearing uh, crystals. The Native Americans have squash blossom turquoise necklaces. And turquoise is great for the throat and heart. And here they are loading up here. Did you ever stop to think of it instead of a piece of beautiful jewelry as a help? I never used to. I do now. Um, one other thing, I was leaving to come here and do this talk, and I gave my wife Marjorie a big hug and a kiss, and she leaned back with a wide-eyed look and said, Brian, is that a crystal in your pocket, or are you happy to see it? <laughs> <laughs> so I checked, it wasn't a crystal. <laughs> okay. Um, what I'm going to have you do is pick that up and point it towards the ceiling. Now look, just having held it for that time, she's out to hear all things. I go ahead and point it towards the ceiling. Okay. Energy's out to here. Now point it at me. Okay. So shape has an effect. If she picks up a round one, it radiates like a globe in all those other directions. This is like a flashlight, it projects a beam. And I see very casual. I've heard people talk terribly to my slice so I don't have. Really? Um, I've never seen it happen yet. One of the things when I, thank you very much, by the way. Thank you. One of the things I always do, when you see on the slide, we're talking about programming, I always set the thought that it always works for the best interest of the higher self and the person we're working with. That no harm to love from that anyone. And uh, I also set them into self clearing, so I don't have to, to do that. But, and I'm not going to put that down. I was doing a talk in the middle of it, but I think I put the crystal next to it. Zap! Computer is dead. Okay. Clearing them. You know, a uh, little bit of a I'm sitting there. You know, you can put it in a mountain stream. Here, I have a little bag of really nice small crystals. Put it in a rain overnight, the current went up and, and weren't there the next day. So while it's a great idea, um, I prefer to keep them on dry land now. They usually know where I find them. The easiest way, you can smudge them. Uh, we were at the Monroe Institute. They had a Native American lived there, who lived in South Dakota, a uh, home that was made out of a dirt road. And he smudges his room all the time. The fourth time the fire department was there, they told him, you can't do smudging in your room. I must clean the space, not here. Um, you put on larger crystals. But a simple thing, and this increases your own energy, is I inhale and exhale. As I exhale, I just picture a big blue white light, which is also great for you to have speeding tickets. Always pop a recall. That's what we call it. an energy blue. If you get pulled over, you can use um, how well it works. And I just cleared this. Oh man, I got a whole box more. It's going to take me forever. Well, I could put my hands on either side of the box and think the same thing. Or, listen, I always I want you to keep anything and everything that's good and let go of everything that's not good. Forever. Baby. Now, you're probably wondering if you really talk to your crystals. Usually not possible. Um, but, I had someone bring on the migraine. I had placed a hurt from a diamond on her forehead. Headaches going just a few minutes. Without thinking about it, I had another person put it on the forehead to be severe. I never get headaches, but I'm starting to get one now. So I took it off, put it in, put it through up. But made a point of making my crystal felt clearer all the time. Um, crystal etiquette. Some people feel like it's their underwear and they don't want other people to think they So when I'm with other people, they have their crystal out and they handle it or use it. And they usually say yes. Mine are for teaching. I have thousands and thousands of them. And 
I make the purpose of that they're for, to be enjoyed, delightful, and for learning. Um, so it's not an issue with any of these to play with them, which we'll do in a little bit. Okay, programming. Some people like to kind of, what the program is not so much for the crystal, it's for you. It's setting an intention. Now I could say this liver has breast cancer meds in the liver. Well, I'm going to work on those meds in the liver, the cancer there. Oh, I forgot about the ones in her rib. I forgot she's anemic. I forgot she's got chemotherapy and healing nausea. Work in the best interest of your higher self. Done deal. Please care about me. Anyone like to meditate with crystals? She says it's perfect. Um, I actually am lucky enough. I put down my laser pointer, but that's okay. I got a finger. Um, that's a Marcel Vogel, and uh, you might see there was a Vogel over in the Reiki Healing Center table yesterday. I was admiring. Um, was an IBM engineer, brilliant. They gave him oodles of money to make his own lab and do anything they wanted. He, they thought he was going to work on computers or IBM, but he actually uh, created Volvo crystals. And this is one that's different. Usually they're six sided and tapered or 12 sided. He has some 24 sided and 21. Um, but it's a special one made, he made for meditation to put on the third eye. I was in the Monroe Institute. We do some consciousness research there. We were listening to tapes and do specific brainwave states. And I had taped it to my forehead. I, being a higher self, fell asleep, of course, rolled over in the bed, hit my head on the wall. Notice how pointy that is. The first scream I ever made her was me sitting up because of the pain in my head. The second one was when I tore it off and took my upper half of my eyebrows with it. Um, I came home, my wife says, you look different. Did you get your hair cut? Um, so I use paper tape now. It's much safer. Um, you can, how do you use crystals for meditation? You can put them on your third eye. Lapis works great. Amethyst. First rule is you can use any crystal anywhere. There's no hard and fast ones. There are some areas like the third eye up here, the throat that the lapis is great for, amethyst is great for the heart. It's also great for nausea and vomiting on the third chakra here. A lot of people don't think of that. And the orientation isn't really all that critical. These are Volvo crystals. They're some of my favorite for healing. You can see the taper. Some people will tell you that the thinner end projects energy, and this one's used for withdrawing. It's not so critical. It's what your thought is. I'm going to withdraw energy with this. I'm going to project energy with this end. It's what's up here, not here, that's really the trick. And if they're really tired and low in energy, I'll put the thinner side going up to increase their energy. If they're fairly balanced, one up, one down, to kind of circulate the energies. <coughs> okay, here we are at the Monroe Institute. It's a great playground for the mind. We're a friend of mine, Rick Ralston. That's his front yard. This crystal and this crystal was 14 feet long in San Paulo, Brazil. As they took it out, it broke in half. That is, instead of being the world's biggest crystal, quartz crystal, that's the world's biggest, that's the second biggest. Um, even broken in half, it's pretty darn big. Each of those quartz crystals are, are worth thousands of dollars. And uh, there's, Melody wrote this book called Laying on a Snow. There's different arrangements. You can arrange them both on the person and around them. You know, one might help with past life recall. This one might be good for heart you know, issues. And basically, we spent three days camped in his yard, doing every arrangement in the book, and taking turns. We set up four or five different ones. We'd all lie down in it for 30 minutes or so, and then rearrange them. It was a hoot.
totally the same as it's not working through the computer, so sorry about that. Oh. Humor, if we were to douse you and douse you again right after, or use a pip image, you'd see a big expansion. Um, okay. Oh, there it is. This is a Herkimer diamond. This is pip imaging, and we'll see some in a little bit. Um, if you look, gold and white are very high energy, high frequency. You rarely see it. But you can see that the outside of the tip here, there's this big energy field. My hand's simply behind it, and then back of the roll field simply asks me to project energy. And you can see this band here is now out here, just with thought and intention. It's a powerful thing. Excuse me? What kind of diamond did you set up? Uh, it's a Herkimer diamond. Custom Herkimer, New York. It's actually a quartz crystal. They're beautiful. They're, they're also some of my favorites. I have one about this big. It's amazing. Um, if you've ever done breath work or seen it done, why do it? This is holding a quartz crystal in the hand. You can see that the hand is energized by it. This big field here in front of it. And with the exhalation, inhale and holding the crystal, it expands and raises the frequency of vibration. That works with yoga and anything else. One of my favorites, see this in the field, the whole field's wiped out. Uh, we men have been saying the size of the crystal doesn't matter. Um, it really is true. Uh, this little thing here is one of the most powerful I've ever had the pleasure to use. And the problem, actually I've got to be careful here. Um, because this, the, the computer we were using to run the software for this kept crashing repeatedly until Harry asked me to move away from it. And then we figured out why. Actually made by Buddhist monks in Sedona, Arizona. I think what makes it so powerful is not the materials, but the intent they put into it. And it does two interesting things. It's meant when you held it to expand the crown chakra up here. And you can see that's simply holding it, and it allows you to channel information. And, uh, when you think to use it for healing, notice nothing happening here, but that here, uh, the energy increases around the crystal. And the video of this doesn't work at the moment, but uh, it will show this field as it was expanding. You can make elixirs. Um, I often put them in my bathtub to soak with. And they use a little uh, brandy in the water. Uh, I don't tell my wife this, I throw out the water. Um, anyway, you can put a few drops under the tongue. Um, spear? Oh, I can just make drinking water. You put the, crystal, the cream crystal in water. Sure. Leave it standing for a few hours or days. Drink it glass of water or whatever, refill the water, leave it standing. Sure. Barb's talking about putting the crystals in a glass of water and letting them absorb the energy the and then drink it. Wait sure. for dogs as well. They can't chew the crystals, but they get the property. I thought you said you used Chardonnay. <laughs> I made that up. Okay. Well, here, notice uh, this is a crystal sphere. Notice there are virtually no inclusions in it which makes it rather uh, pricey as a result. You don't need anything that fancy. But some people used to use these, you know, you've seen the old seance with the crystal ball. It's not so much the ball has to do with it, it gives them something to kind of unfocus on and get into that receptive state. Uh, egg shapes are great. You can use them as to massage people, roll it, simply tape it in place. Uh, this is a uh, malachite here. I like it because it looks like an eyeball. Mm -hmm. Adventurine, smoky quartz. And this is citrine. It came from a museum in Russia. Uh, there's virtually no uh, inclusion in it. And actually, uh, I had a lady, I worked at Rochester General in the emergency department. It was after my shift was done, and I was <coughs> excuse me, seeing her in a back room. And, uh, I put her on the table, layered her with hundreds of crystals, 
And she said the overhead fluorescent light was bothering her when I might turn it off. I said, well, it'll be pretty dark. And she goes, oh, it won't bother me. Uh, you can see I have a lot of these toolboxes that have foam and dozens of crystals in each one. And I turned the light off, forgetting I left that, tripped over it, fell on top of her. She fell off the table. I hear ting, 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 ting. Sounds like glass breaking everywhere. I, you know, like they always broken a hip. I turn the light on. She's okay. None of the crystals broke. But I get a little washcloth and just put it over their eyes now. I know they're short cut. <laughs> Um, there are wands, and as you saw with that one big crystal, you can find all kinds. This is called a chakra wand. It's a uh, ruby and fuchsite with a different stone for each chakra. Uh, so they coordinate turquoise, lapis, amethyst, uh, citrine, carnelian. But there's all different variants, and it's what appeals to you. It's not that that's better. Again, the vocals, I really love these. They have huge energy. Uh, and we can douse or use the pip and see what it does to your peel a little bit. chest area, so we use a, a bunch of different ones uh, up here, hematite, fluorite, um, and combinations. Then usually I put one on each chakra. You can see the Volgo crystal in there. This one's pointed down, the other one up to kind of circulate and increase her energy. Um, these are, I'm simply holding, this is a pip image again, a uh, Rose quartz crystal fogel in this hand and a clear quartz in the other. You can see the difference of the beam. If you actually look, this almost looks like rose on here. And the vogel has a very powerful energetic uh, projection. This is uh, using some vogel crystals here. You can see the whole field pulsating, interacting with the human energy field. You can actually see the beam going down the crystal and out the point. You can also see that the hands are have increased energy as well while using this. Um, red is usually very painfully a severe arthritis in his knee and limping very badly. And in the after, this took about five minutes. There's the four red reds. He had a knee replacement here, so we don't see as much red. And here it's cleared pretty well. He still has some prostate issues up here, which we did not work on at that time. So you can see the red in the area. Um, there's all kinds of different layouts you can do. And uh, Melody's laying on a stone is one good book. Um, the, there's a bunch of books you can buy. There's whatever you feel drawn to do. Uh, I live in a rural area. This is my wife Margie. And we go out there a nice day, set the table out back, put some large crystals underneath. And, uh, smaller ones on whoever we're uh, having fun with. You can use combinations. This is, uh, these are both quartz crystals. That's amethyst and that's topaz. That's chlorite and ruby. And notice you can use a chain to wear around your neck and get all that wonderful energy. Um, I use them also in healing work. And interestingly, there's literature peer-reviewed literature, and my experience has been that fracture healing times about half. Uh, Zach here had a Collie's fracture in his wrist, or it's normally eight weeks of casting, about know, four weeks. You can use it for chemotherapy patients who have low blood counts. Uh, usually I uh, place them to concentrate on the first chakra, so putting your hands on either side of the hip is a great way to send energy there. Uh, you can use hematite, smoky quartz, tiger's eyes. Uh, any red crystal. Use them for headaches. Uh, chemotherapy. 
energy therapies and crystals are often very helpful. And they get real nauseous. What's happened? The third chakra energy just drops off. There are times you may not even see the third chakra. And if you simply place your hand there and perceive sunlight or how you like to picture energy coming into the head and out the hand, you can reduce nausea and vomiting in just 10 or 15 minutes. And the best part is you can teach the individual to do it for themselves. But amethyst is a great stone to put there, uh, hematite, uh, if they're having a lot of nausea. And uh, Gretchen, who gave me permission to use her name, the lymphoma college student, I had given her a stone, she, she liked crystals for each chakra. I told her, just put them on for five minutes a day. Well, I didn't know she was wearing them 24 7. And she had her first CT scan after the uh, chemotherapy had been started to see her progress. And I get a stat page to radiology, which I thought, oh my God, somebody's crashing in the scanner. And I go in and it's Gretchen's. And the radiologist is looking at her scan and goes, what are these? And you see these little rocks. <laughs> she forgot to take them off <laughs> for the CAT scan. And so they had to repeat it again. And she had remarkably improved. And I told her, you don't have to wear them all the time. You can take them off. Uh, radiation, same thing. It splinters the energy field. So um, you can use crystals to smooth it out. And use your hands. To, I think of it like uh, doing frosting on a cake just to smooth it out. Uh, this is my mother-in-law had a scalp lymphoma. I had radiation therapy directly to the scalp, which ordinarily would cause severe burns and poor wound healing. And this is her last day of radiation. The wound healed nicely, no burns, and you see her hair is starting to grow back already. Uh, animals love it. Mickey was hyperthyroid on $100 a month medications. We simply used a little lapis crystal. And he's normally a shy and skittish cat, but he loved to come up. Uh, I was seeing his owner, Jackie, who was uh, pregnant and had breast cancer. And he would sit pounding his head on the basement door until he opened it to invite him in and play with him. And you can use it for chemo patients to help, along with energy therapies, uh, with hair loss and chemotherapy. Um, Allie here had a stage four lymphoma, lost all her hair in two weeks. And this is two weeks after she started with the Reiki. And you can see I'm using multiple crystals in combination. Um, and this is two weeks while still on the same chemotherapy cause of the loser. You can use it to energize your patient. This person had a big history of substance abuse, alcohol, and drugs. So the liver is very congested. And you see she has uh, the livers in the right upper side here. There's a bunch of crystal laid on there. Uh, the Buddha, my favorite crystal, uh, Annie, I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Buddha, as Sherry Hogan has in the back. So you guys, um, a very rare. It was carved in the 16th century Qing Dynasty uh, by a Buddhist monk with specific healing intentions. And I think, again, it's not the rose quartz is fabulous quality, but I think it was the intention of the person that made it that makes it so potent. Um, and when you image it, his whole field pulsates, and notice he's got a green heart chakra. I've never seen that in a crystal before. strep throat. I had 103 fever, my dog, and a lot of pain. And unfortunately, my prescriptions are not good there. So I took this crystal wand and pointed it at my throat. And you notice where it's pointed turned blue-green from red. And he said, stop, let's video it. You'll see the energy go through my neck here, spill out the back right there. And wherever it's pointed, shifts color rate. The actual time was 1 minute 10 seconds. And you can see the beam going up through the... This is filled with gem quality Herkimer uh, diamonds, by the way. Beautiful wand. And you can go through the whole 10 minutes. But you can see before, a minute 10 seconds later, notice how the energy around me has increased dramatically. 
my temperature went down to normal, my voice returned, and my discomfort was improved greatly. This is Venus, a great dame with hip dysplasia. Notice the dark spot here and the leak from it, the sacral chakra. Uh, they spent $10,000 the owners did uh, with their vet to get the diagnosis, we made it in about 10 seconds, and put an electro crystal device. It has crystals in here pulsed for electromagnetic energies, and you notice this is five minutes into it that the leak has stopped, there's much less darkness, and we had it on for an hour, and uh, he just walked normally for about a week, and then gradually it returned. You can see the before, dark, dark spot, dark spots improved. The leak here has stopped. Uh, Crystal Lazard, that is an eagle carved out of a one piece road, uh, turquoise nugget, and that's out of sodalite. You don't know, want to know what it's like. This is the world's second largest crystal, and you can see as you put energy to it, it increases your own. And you know, it literally pulses the whole sky. Feels great, by the way. And just kind of moved into the wall. This is the world's largest crystal. What we're doing, we're doing some oh, 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 oh. So you'll see a pulse. And I need to edit this video a little shorter. But we're sending healing energy to someone who's having major spine surgery. We're giving them the ICU for two days. Uh, and then hopefully downgrade it. But, uh, Brian, what do you physically feel when you put your hands oh, on something? Amazing. But but what do you physically feel? Explain it to um, us. You'll see when this pulses, it was literally like an orgasm. I mean, the energy was so incredible, it just rushed through you. Um, and if you watch this gentleman, for instance, right here, you'll see him shift from this color to white. Boom, that, that's when the beam went off the show. Uh, Harry had to be 125 feet away so the computer would still function. Um, it was, and my friend actually went from the OR to the recovery area and went to the regular floor that didn't even use the ICU. I thought he was going to be toast. Uh, but it's really incredible energy. And for people, in just a minute, we'll take a break and let you play with some of these. Um, it's a pretty intense experience. I mean, for people who don't have a sense of crystals, uh, you have to be dead not to sense those. Uh, this is a friend of mine, Marian Dominic, the great Reiki healer. This is Bell Rock. It's a, a energy spot or a vortex in Sedona, Arizona. And if you look, this whole valley is gold energy, going higher in white. She's going to inhale and exhale and send healing energy to the entire valley. And if you've ever gotten those emails, please send healing to Mother Earth kind of thing. You say, oh, what can one person do? You know, why should I waste my time? Um, the other thing with PIP, it measures photon ions being both emitted and reflected. So lighting affects it, um, movement affects it. That's why in the clinic we have very controlled conditions, fixed full spectrum lighting and footprints for them to stand on. Here you don't have that advantage. But this dark shirt normally absorbs energy or the light, and so you don't see any activity. Although you can see here and here, she's pretty energetic. But despite that, when she does this, you'll see this whole area turn gold. One person. What do you think if all of us in this room is that healing energy to Son of Earth Garden? Send it to Mother Earth, she needs it. <laughs> and the plants. Okay, I'm going to say the Earth needs it, the people and Earth, the animals, plant life, we sure. already need it, especially it. We have just a little time here, and I thought it might be fun. Um, I have a bunch of crystals here. If any of you have ever worked with them before, there's a lot of fun things you can do. 
The reason safe crackers are so spiritual and rub their hands together before opening safes it stimulates your hand chakras and makes your fingertips more sensitive. If you were to take different fabrics and feel them and then do this and feel them, you pick up more textures and sensation. And uh, these are all, feel free to pick any of them up, you won't get hurt. But this is a bowl wall. If you rub your hands together for just a minute, think of it like a flashlight projecting energy. And again, you might not feel anything, but. And it'll differ from various people. Some feel tingling, some warm, some nothing, which is okay. That's the energy of us, and that's the energy that crystals have. And so, you know, you can. Uh, Feel free to come up, pick one of these out to play with. They're really kind of nice. And uh, while you guys are having some fun, I'm going to.